Well, good evening YouTube and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today you have the Rhino and we're looking at a beer that was sent to me by In The Basement. So thank you very much Jamie for sending this beer out. This beer is from Waterloo. It's from Gold Crown Brewing. It is their premium lager. Gold Crown Brewing premium lager is 5.5? Yep, 5. no, 5.3% alcohol by volume. There is what it looks like. Um, I know nothing about Gold Crown Brewing. I I don't know if it's an actual brewery. I don't know if it's a restaurant's brewery. It doesn't really say on here. I do know that every time I look at breweries in Waterloo and Kitchener and all that, whenever I'm going on trips, I look up what breweries are around. And this one always comes up, but it never really has hours or anything like that. So I don't know. I don't know. It must be, it must be a regional brand. We have uh, my... Angle Shell, my Austrian Trappist glass. I really love this. It's it's basically a Teku, but not quite, but I love it. It is one that I actually did chip the very first day I got it, so I'm very careful with it. It, uh, it hasn't been used in a very long time. Okay, Gold Crown Premium Lager. Thank you, Jamie, again, for sending this out. Okay, so, it's a nice looking beer. I mean, in all honesty, bright white head, it is fading pretty quickly, beautiful deep golden color, super easy to see through, I mean, my hand, perfect. Um, I mean, I personally like my beer a little more hazy, but that's a, that's a nice looking beer. I mean, it has more of that, like... <sighs> More of that almost honey color than um, more of that honey color than than what you might get from uh, from a macro. But it, it, the head reminded me of a macro. The clearness reminds me of a macro. But the uh, the honey color maybe maybe like a macro ice. Let's give it a sniff. Hmm. Okay. So. Uh, again, thank you very much in the ba uh, Basement Beer Reviews for sending this out to me. Uh, basement Beer Reviews, Jamie is an awesome guy. Uh, great time hanging out with him whenever we whenever we go by uh, Waterloo, even if it's only for a beer. Uh, great time with him. Sorry, I'm picking a scab off my leg. <laughs> because I find that more interesting than what I have in front of me now. Um, butter. I smell butter. Um... Diacetyl, lots of diacetyl. And that's about it out of the glass. Butter and kind of like a wet dog smell out of the bottle. It could still taste fine, but at this moment this is reminding me of, uh, of all those beers I picked up from, from Blue Elephant. Uh, beers that had a brewing fault due to the... Uh, Due to the equipment being used, it, it it more times than not ended up having a very buttery flavor. So let's try the beer. Cheers. Make sure we're not drinking from the cut part. Oh, we almost did. There we go. No, no. Um, the beer's not cold. It's it's basement temperature. It did just arrive today. It was just shipped yesterday, so it's not like oh my god, it changed uh, and it's been cool. Um, it, so it's not like it's 
it may be old, but um, I wouldn't know because there's no date on the bottles, guys. Um, it tastes like butter and dirty gym socks. Butter and dirty gym socks. There is a little bit of like an earthy hoppiness fades afterwards, but um, butter and dirty gym socks, the beginning and the middle of this. butter, the gym socks, that earthy bitterness, and a little bit of, um, a little bit of almost like soda water playing across the back of the palate. I bet if this was cold, it would just come off with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of butteriness, and it would just be nothing but that little bit of butteriness and the, and the hoppiness is probably all you would pick up. All in all, is it a bad beer? It's not for me. Um, is there a brewing fault? Unless they're playing the uh, Grand River Brewing Company game and they want that buttery taste to be their, their trademark, yeah, there's a brewing fault. Um, and the, the Dirty Gym Socks could be oxidization. It could have an oxidization problem. It did have a good pop, though, when it came off, so I don't think that's the problem. And the underside of the cap isn't damaged or anything, so it should have sealed well. Uh, it may not have but it should have. I mean, I'm not getting the telltale, uh, the telltale wet cardboard taste, but I, I have noticed that, that, like, mildewy taste can be, can be from, uh, from oxidization, too. Uh, so maybe it's oxidized as well as, uh, a butter bomb. Maybe it has that going against it. I think, again, if this was cold, the butter wouldn't be as problematic. Um, I think that this is a beer that I could drink if I really had to. I just don't really want to. Because, I mean, I can put it back. It has no problem with that. It's just... I don't know. There's just... There, there's so many better loggers out there. Uh... In all honesty, I would I would probably buy a macro lager before I ever bought this again. But if you love this beer, you love this beer, that's great for you. If you came over and you brought a 12-pack of this beer over, we'd get it nice and cold and I'd probably drink it with you. That being said, out of 10 for myself, it's going to get a 4 out of 10. I don't really care to drink it again. I don't really want to drink it again. I do appreciate getting the chance to drink it. At least now I can say I drank something from Gold Crown Brewing. Uh, because, I mean, in all honesty... My biggest problem is that I don't get a lot of these breweries. <coughs> Excuse me, there are more breweries in Ontario that I have not had one beer from than there are breweries that I've had a beer from at this point in time. So stuff like this is always great to get. Thank you very much, Jamie, Basement Beer Reviews, for sending it out. It was great to try. But like I said, 4 out of 10. Thank you guys. Au revoir. Abiento. See you soon. Bye-bye. Gold Crown Premium Lager, not for the Rhino.